Imagine you and your dive buddy are enjoying your dive, checking out the local wildlife when one of you signals low on air. You check your dive computer and see you're only about 30 minutes into your dive. Reluctantly, you both head to the surface, complete your safety stop, and are a bit upset that your dive was cut so short. If you've ever been that buddy that's signaling low on air early like that, you definitely know the feeling of, you know, kind of feeling like you're disappointing your dive buddy. Now, if you've ever been the other buddy where you're having to head back early, you might feel that little bit of resentment towards your dive buddy for having to go back so soon and that they're a bit of an air hog. In this video, I'll give you the secrets to improving your air consumption. If you're the diver that always signals low on air before everyone else, you're gonna learn some tricks to improve your air consumption overall. And if you're that diver that's tired of going back early, share this video with your friends and just help them out a bit in improving their own air consumption. With that, let's get into it. I'm Thomas Hughes, a professional scuba instructor, and let me just take a quick step back and let me just say that if you are the diver that always feels like you're signaling low on air before everyone else, you need to not feel bad about that and don't feel like you're letting people down or disappointing them. Yes, you know, everyone wants to dive as long as possible, but if you feel bad about this or people make you feel bad about signaling like that, it actually leads to a lot of diver mistakes and can actually lead to injury or death because some people just feel bad and they say like, oh, you know what, I don't want to say I'm at half a tank yet. Or, you know, I don't want to say I'm already at a thousand PSI because everyone else has so much more air and I'll just make it work. I'll just make it last. Doing that is just gonna put yourself at risk and your buddies at risk who then have to try to rescue you and end the dive early and might even end your diving week and your entire trip, depending on the circumstances. It's also important to keep in mind that there are some factors that we just can't control when it comes to our air consumption. So as an example, larger people or bigger people, whatever you wanna say, typically consume more air than smaller people. And that's not just like body weight versus muscle. If you have a lot of muscle mass or a lot of body fat for that matter, you're probably gonna be consuming more air than someone that is a lot more slimmer and has less muscle, less fat. Uh, additionally, if you're taller, you're gonna be consuming more air than someone that's smaller. It's just, you have a larger body mass, you have more air consumption needs and more oxygen needs in your body. So you're gonna be breathing harder and that's just the way it is. Another thing we can't control is our age. And as much as we might wanna lie and say we're younger or something like that, uh, younger people actually tend to consume more air than older people. I've gone diving with someone that was in their 80s. And I mean, this person, not only were they super smooth and efficient underwater, which we'll talk about that in just a moment, but I think just their age came into play as well. And I think they had 2000 PSI left after a 60 foot dive that we were at 60 feet for about 45 minutes. And they still had 2000 PSI on a 3000 PSI tank. So two thirds of their tank were left. I mean, it's just crazy where younger people, sometimes they get more excited or they're just moving around a lot more in general. Again, we'll talk about those tips in just a moment here, uh, but for whatever reason, younger people metabolize oxygen faster and therefore they need more air and they basically consume their air faster. Now I'll talk about the tricks that we can do to help improve our air consumption and things that we can actively participate in and work on to try to fix our, our sac rate or our surface air consumption rate, how quickly we use air. Uh, but before I get into that, while you're working on these things, there are a few things you can do to kind of help out with this problem of feeling like you're turning the dive early or that you're always that first one to signal low on air. And some of those things are, remember, you know, you can rent larger tanks. So uh, you more than likely used an aluminum 80 or a uh, aluminum 12 liter, I think, it would be for a metric system. And that aluminum 80 cubic foot cylinder is like a standard cylinder, right? Uh, but they do make aluminum 100s, for example, with 100 cubic feet. And those have more gas in them, 20 more cubic feet of gas. Uh, and they would be aluminum 15 liters, I believe, for the metric system, right? So those larger tanks have more gas in them. And therefore, you'll be able to breathe your air longer and you won't be down as quickly on your PSI. So it's definitely something you can do while you're learning. Um, I would say it's a bit of a, a crutch in a sense, but I mean, it's really like, why not use the gear if it exists? The other option you'll have is there's also steel tanks available and steel tanks have a couple benefits when it comes to your buoyancy, which is a whole separate thing. You can actually see up in the cards and link down below a, a tip on buoyancy if that's a problem that you have as well. But steel tanks also have um, the ability to hold higher pressure. So you might have 3,500 PSI instead of 3,000 PSI. And because that tank can be filled at a higher pressure, there's more gas within the tank, even though it's the same volume. So a steel 80 will have more gas within it than a steel, or I'm sorry, than an aluminum 80. Uh, steel 100s are about the same size as aluminum 80s, so that's usually what people go with. I own a couple of those. I own some aluminum 80s, and you know, as you get into your diving, you might buy larger tanks or higher capacity tanks like that if that's something that you struggle with. 
That's why I initially bought my steel tanks actually is because I struggled with air consumption when I first started diving and over time it got better. So just know that while you're working on these things, there are things you can do to kind of fix it before you really improve your air consumption. You can fix that ability to turn the dive early by just renting a larger tank or a higher capacity tank with getting steel or you know something like an aluminum 100 instead of an aluminum 80. That said, I know you came to this video because you want to learn the secrets to improve, and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you. So getting into those tricks, some of the things that I mentioned earlier will come into play here. So first of all, you need to relax when you are diving. And I know this is something people struggle with, and even some people have asked me to make entire videos on relaxing before I dive, which maybe I'll do that. If you want that, leave a comment down below. But let me just kind of get into it some. Uh, some of the things you can do to start with is actually visualize the dive and that'll help you relax. So what I mean by this is as you're gearing up or maybe you've already geared up and you're sitting waiting to go, close your eyes for a moment. Imagine sitting on the surface, okay? Breathing calmly. I'm gonna take my inflator hose, press that deflate button. I'm gonna sink below the surface. I'm gonna feel the colder water hit my face and I'm just gonna breathe and I'm gonna exhale, not fidget and just sink straight down until I get into my neutrally buoyant position hit that inflator if I need to, just a little bit to give myself that nice buoyant position if I'm going down deeper. And there we are, we're underwater, we're calm, we're relaxed, right? And visualizing that process like I just did there will help you actually be more calm and relaxed when you get into the water because you aren't gonna be fidgeting around and saying, okay, well, that's right, where's my, where's my inflator hose again? Nope, that's my snorkel. Nope, where's my inflator? Okay, and that over breathing makes that chest tight. You wind up getting air trapped in your lungs. You aren't able to deflate your lungs completely to exhale completely. And then you'll actually think you need more weight. The more weight causes you to exert more force underwater. And there you go. You now are using more air than you would have had to use normally. That means your air consumption goes up. So if you identify with that, hit a like or go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know. Another thing you can do before you even get in the water is really to just relax your breathing. Consciously breathe in nice and smoothly, deeply, exhale nice and smoothly, deeply. I'm not saying you have to go into a full like meditative mode or anything like that, but just be mindful, right? Mindfulness, do that visualization activity, calm your breathing, don't get all worked up about it at all. That's just gonna make you breathe through air faster and there's no reason to do that, right? We just need to stay nice and calm, take those deep breaths, relax, we're gonna have a lot of fun on the dive and there's no reason to get worked up about it. Relaxing like that before you get in the water actually carries into the dive as well. And when you're underwater, I want you to stay relaxed as well. Just enjoy yourself. There's no reason to like rush around or anything like that. Go slow. And if you go slow, you're actually gonna see more usually than you would if you start fidgeting around nice and fast, right? Fish are smart. They, they see you coming usually, almost always. And you usually are making a lot of noise because even the exhalation of your bubbles is something that fish aren't used to in the sense of, you know, it's not a common noise they hear every single day uh, or all the time throughout the day. So they hear those bubbles coming, right? So if you just go slow, you'll actually see more fish come out of their little hidey hole sometimes and you'll actually be able to observe even more. Uh, if you're into macro photography or just macro uh, creatures in general, those tiny little baby guys, right? You can actually see things like blennies and stuff because they'll start poking their heads out of the corals and out of the reefs and you'll start seeing those things that you might have missed otherwise. You know, seahorses that blend in really well, frogfish, all these things that blend in and you wouldn't normally see, if you're going nice and slow, you're gonna see all of those. And that has the added benefit of keeping you nice and relaxed. You're not overexerting yourself and therefore you're saving on your air consumption. Now, along with that, that means that we aren't gonna be fidgeting as much, okay? Newer divers are notorious for this. And if you see any footage of newer divers, you'll always see this. And it's kind of funny because it's just like a rite of passage type thing, but you'll see they're constantly adjusting their, their uh, BCD. They're using their inflator hose constantly. They might be sculling with their hands, which is a huge no-no. Don't do that. Don't need your hands to move underwater. It's extremely inefficient unless you uh, have like webbed uh, gloves and it's due to a mobility issue, right? That's a separate case. But in a general sense for, for the average diver out there, we don't need to be using our hands everywhere. We don't need to be zooming back and forth. Just have a nice, calm, relaxing dive, cruise with it and be like the fish, right? Just nice and calm, efficient movements through the water. With that said, talking about efficient movements, you should learn how to frog kick as soon as possible. And I'll have a card up in the corner up here as well as linked down in the description of video to how to frog kick if you wanna learn how to do that. Uh, frog kicking is one of the most efficient ways, if not the most efficient way to move through the water. So it's that kind of motion where you kick out like this, right? And you'll see a lot of uh, divers have been diving for a little while start doing that. You'll see it in a lot of my videos as well. So just something to consider out there. 
being efficient in the water, relaxing yourself, not fidgeting around and moving smoothly through the water is one of the biggest keys and largest tricks that I can teach you about improving your air consumption. Now, efficiency also includes being neutrally buoyant, being in proper trim, streamlined without things dangling all over the place so you can just glide through that water as efficient as possible and not have you know, all this extra drag and resistance or extra weight that's causing you to have to carry that through the water as well. Being overweighted is something that a lot of beginner divers have problems with, and it's something that you'll improve over time. You'll realize that you can start reducing the amount of weight that you need to get under the water. And a lot of that is really because what I mentioned earlier, that air gets trapped in your lungs because you're not relaxed. You're not able to deplete your lungs fully. So you think you need more weight, but really it's just that you're still holding some air in your lungs. And that's what's causing you to not sink below the surface. And now you just have extra weight your entire dive and it's gonna actually make your air consumption worse. You're gonna use more gas because you have more weight that you're moving around, you're not as efficient. Now, if you identified with any of that, I have a whole video about buoyancy and just kind of fixing your weighting problems to begin with. And I'll have that up in the cards and link down below as well. I encourage you to check that out afterwards. And if you know anyone that struggles with that, share that out with them as well. They'll really appreciate it. Now, just think about it, right? So if you're neutrally buoyant, then you're gonna be using less air to constantly adjust your BCD. You're not losing gas, so to speak, by you know hitting that inflator hose to add a little bit of air, and then you start going up and you're like, oh man, let me dump a little bit more, right? And you'll see again, newer divers do this all the time. And it's not a problem, it's just something that is why you're using more air, is you're hitting that inflator button and then dumping, hitting the inflator, dumping, and adjusting it the entire dive. That fidgeting like that is also making you use more muscles, which metabolizes more oxygen, which means you're gonna need more air. So you're gonna be breathing harder because of that. And I'm not saying like out of breath breathing hard, but you will breathe more often the more you fidget. That's another reason why I say don't skull with your hands or you know do these unnecessary movements. The more calm and relaxed you can be, not just in your mental and within your breathing itself, but actually underwater, just kind of locking wrists or you know holding your hands or whatever you need to do, hold your hold your straps on your BCD, whatever you got to do to stop moving and fidgeting around, that's going to help you tremendously with your air consumption. You'll be shocked at how much further your gas goes when you're just relaxed and not moving and fidgeting all over the place. Now, I'll admit, when I first started, I used to suck down air like crazy. I'd be lucky if I got a 40 minute dive on an aluminum 80 at like a 60 foot depth. Um, I usually would have to start cruising a lot higher than the rest of the group. Me and my dive buddy would be at like 30 feet when everyone else is still down at 60. That's just so we could try to stretch that dive out. We'd still end up having to finish it at 40, shoot up an SMB and then just like follow the group from the surface, which is terrible and totally sucks. We just had to follow them until the end of the dive and we could all get picked up by the boat. Like not a fun experience for us at all. Um, and I'm sure it wasn't fun for my dive buddy. And for me, I didn't love any of my dive early. I wanted to be under there as long as possible. So I understand where you're coming from if you struggle with this. And a lot of this just comes with more practice and more time in the water. Now, I'm sure this isn't new to you. If you look this up anywhere with any of the like basic things that you struggle with, air consumption, buoyancy, finning techniques, etc., people will tell you that more time in the water is the number one way to improve air consumption, buoyancy, trim, comfortability in the water, like just all of those different things come with ease as you get more time in the water. If you want to consume less air, dive more. If you want to improve your buoyancy, dive more. You want to learn how to frog kick or back fin, well, you got to be in the water and dive more, right? It sounds so simple, but really diving more is going to be that key to unlock the success in all the things you want to accomplish as a diver. Honestly, it's one of the reasons why I think everyone should get their advanced open water certification. And if you want to hear more reasons, check out the card or the video link down below. Now, with all that said, the next thing you're going to want to do is be able to measure your progress on how much air you're consuming on your dives, what your sac rate is or your surface air consumption rate is, which is how quickly you're going through your gas, and just being able to start logging basically what your starting gas was, what your end pressure was, and what the dive was itself so you can see if you're actually improving or if you're just kind of staying the same. And one of the easiest ways to do this is by using an air integrated computer. And for more information about air integration and all the benefits about that, click or tap the screen now to check out a video on that. With that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.